Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the Gospel of Matthew. We're in chapter 13 today. This is the third of the five major sermons that Jesus gives in the book of Matthew, and it is the parables sermon. And I want to talk about the Jesus' use of parables because Jesus goes into a great detail as to why he uses parables. Parables are used throughout the Bible, used throughout the Old Testament. The parables that are used in the Bible, particularly those used by Jesus, are not like Aesop's fables or, or, or any of the other fantastic stories that uh, are told in other cultures, but they're quite quotidian in nature. Jesus doesn't talk about talking animals or unicorns or, or mermaids or or, or any kind of um, supernatural phenomena like that, aliens landing or, or anything. What Jesus talks about is something as simple as a man going out to sow seed, uh, a woman baking bread some, the, way, the way a mustard plant grows. Uh, everyday things uh, are the topic of Jesus' parables, things that would inhabit the lives of his listeners. And... Uh, and, and a parable serves that purpose um, to get us to think, to to get us to think about the things in our lives, to 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 use what is known to explain the unknown. We talked about this back in Matthew chapter seven. Uh, four of the five sermons have parables in them. This sermon is just parables. In fact, sermons one, three, and four end on parables. Um, and, uh, and, and we're told in this chapter, Jesus didn't teach unless he used parables. The word parable means literally to throw beside. And it's using something that we know to explain something we don't, comparing something we do know with something we don't know. And in this, um, and in this sermon, he's talking about sharing the gospel uh, as well as uh, what the kingdom of heaven will be like when it is established. And that's what he's going to do. Um, this, this chapter is interesting in that it, in three different spots in the chapter, he talks to us about uh, why, he, why he teaches in parables. We're told in chapter 1, verse 3, that he spoke many things in parables uh, to them. And then in verses 10 through 17, we're, we're told about the... Um, the necessity of parables. The disciples said to him, Why do you speak in parables? He answered to them, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but it has not been granted to them. Whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he shall have an abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away. Jesus is going to use this principle in the parable of the talents later on to make a different point. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because while seeing, they do not see, while hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled. And he quotes Isaiah 6 here. You will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull, and with their ears they scarcely hear. They have closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn again, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, your ears because they hear. The difference between the masses and the apostles is that the, that the apostles truly want to learn what Jesus has to say. With the masses of people, most of them are there because of the celebrity of Jesus, the special effects of the miracles, and the free meal that they may get. Uh, there are other draws that bring the crowds to Jesus. Um, Jesus is not saying God is intentionally obscuring the facts. Um, this quote comes from Isaiah 6. When God is looking for someone to send to the people and to deliver his message, and Isaiah says, here am I, send me. And God says to Isaiah, okay, if you're going to go, this is the way it's going to be. Nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to pay attention. And what God is saying specifically in this passage and what Jesus is saying is they don't want to hear. So if I tell them a story that makes them think 
then maybe they'll think and maybe they'll get it. If I just tell them straight up, they're not going to listen anyway. They're just not. They're not going to see it. They're not going to hear it. So I have to tell them a story and the story may engage their minds and get them to think. And that's what Jesus does. Uh, we're told in verses, um, in verses 34 and 35, all these things Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables, and he was not talking to them without a parable, so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, and this isn't from one of the prophets, of course, this is from Psalm 78, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. So this quote from Psalm 78 is saying that parables are here to unlock something, but you have to do the math. A story makes you think about the story. Uh, if I just give you the facts, you can zone me out. But if I engage your mind with the story uh, and you listen to that story, then you'll think about that story and maybe get the point. The perfect example of this is Nathan the prophet in 2 Samuel chapter 12 coming to David after he has sinned with Bathsheba. And he could have said, you sin with Bathsheba. And David could have responded angrily to him and had him killed the way he had Uriah the Hittite killed. But that's not what Nathan did. Nathan told him a story about a rich man who took a poor man's only sheep that was the family pet and then served it up for dinner to his guests. And the story engaged David's mind and his heart and his moral sense and when he says this man should die, uh, but he's going to pay. He's going to pay exponentially for taking this poor man's sheep. And then Nathan pointed at him and said, you're the man. You're the one who did this. That's the power of a story. A story plows the field, so to speak, so that the seed is not falling on hard ground. And that's the purpose of a parable. And that's what we're told. Uh, throughout Matthew chapter 13. Next time we're together, we'll talk about the first of the two really long parables in this sermon. And, um, and uh, we'll pick up with first one next time of chapter 13. Uh, thank you for joining me today, and we'll see you then.